Mr. Moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota Pete fucking Campbell, dude. What the fuck is going on, man? What it is, brother? How you doing? <laughs> We're doing great, man. We just got done blasting some fucking pentagram, man. Going down the fucking, uh, going down the memory tube, man. Oh, I said this was just listening to Petrified. That's my favorite tune to play, man. Fuck yeah, dude! I was just, I love was, that song. It's an insane. It's so fuck. It's way beyond what it should be. Like it's so fucking heavy. It's the heaviest song ever. <laughs> man, it, it is, dude. The the fuck those riffs, man. Like what the fuck? Oh, insane. But like the drums in it too, I, and I was thinking about it. And I, I know you didn't play on that recording of it, but I got some. <clears throat> I got some coming up uh, after the interview with you on them. But I was, I wanted to ask you, like, what is it like fucking playing that tune live, man? It's crazy because that's the the, the shit. The, the the only shit thing about being a pentagram is playing Jeff O'Keefe's drums. And fucking Joe Hasselvander's drum parts. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the most shittiest part because they're both super fucking gods. Big shoes, and, man. Big, huge shoes. And, and I tried my best to, like, you know, like, do, do certain things to homage to them, but then I gotta sprinkle a little bit of my fairy dust up in there at the same time. And it all works out. But yeah, it's just fucking some of my favorite drumming is from those two dudes. Well, man, I think you're doing all right, dude. Fucking like you got well, hell. Thanks, bro. <laughs> you got a hell of a fucking resume yourself, man. Like fuck, man. Like, right, right, right. Yeah, it took a long time. I just my ADD doesn't let me sit still, so I always just tell everybody, "Yep, sure, yep, yep, I'll do it." Yeah, I, I didn't even. I actually didn't know that you played in sixty watt shaman until we started talking. And then I, I looked you up, and I was like, "Oh shit." What the fuck? Oh, yeah. Man? Yeah, yeah. I was in that band for like eight years, man. That was a badass record, too, man. Yeah, that was good. That was good. And we, we have, uh, there was some other stuff. We were finishing the third one, and then the band just broke up. And we're just like, fuck. So somewhere, somewhere, there's those fucking tunes. I'm trying my best to find them, man. So I'm going to find them, and some people will hear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like you guys were kind of ahead of the curve, man, with a lot of stuff back then. Cause like, looking back, like that's that's a while back, you know. But like, there's there's been a lot of stuff that's come out since that that definitely has that vibe, you know. Right. No, I think the reason to live was what two thousand one, man, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, so Jesus fucking Christ, that's old. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, we tried to change it a little bit, you know, because we were, I mean, the band was, you know, out of Maryland at the time, so, like, everybody was either trying to be the obsessed or trying to be clutch. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're like, well, let's not be either of them. Let's go right in the middle. And we tried to fit right in the middle. I, think, I thought we did all right. I wish we was, were still a band, because that was a fun-ass band, man. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, w- one of my favorite things uh, 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 about that band was the fucking bass, man. Like they did some bass solo kind of stuff that kind of felt like Cliff Burton ish, you know. And like I remember back then, like thinking, "What the fuck, man? You guys got to check this out." And telling all my friends, you know, like, dude. Yeah, that actually was an homage to Cliff from from Jim, uh, our bass player. He he uh, passed away a couple years ago. But uh, he loved Cliff Burton, so that was like his little homage out there, and I think he did a great job. Oh, man. Rest in peace, dude. Absolutely. Yeah, he went way too young, but, you know, just kind of wrong place, wrong time kind of situ- situation right there. Yeah. Well, tell us uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Like, uh, what <coughs> What's your what's your what's your musical history, man? Like, how did you get into this whole fucking thing, dude? What was what was some of the first records that that fucking blew your mind and made you made you want to start jamming, man? Oh man, goddamn! We're gonna go back that far, huh? Hell I can't yeah. remember yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. I mean, I remember being a kid, like just a little kid, and I got an older brother. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um. His whole room was like kiss, man, nothing but kiss, yeah. kiss, kiss, kiss. And I went, what the fuck is this? Like, I didn't know anything about music. I didn't know nothing. I was like four or something. And then I, I looked at Kiss Alive 2, the record, and I like mm-hmm. opened it up and I saw the inside of that record, man, with all like the fire and shit and these dudes playing guitars. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> yeah. And then 
Yeah, that's how it all. I was like, I want to do that. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be that. If the, if this guy, because then it got to the point where I just got like obsessed with fucking Kiss, dude. It was like um, everybody had their X Men, their Spider Man, like comic books, and my comic book here was with fucking Ace Freely. You know what I mean? So like, it was just dedicated my life to try to play music because that's what Kiss did. And then I found a bunch of other stuff, you know, later on in life where it's like. I just have to do it. And then I think I was playing in my first band when I was like nine years old. Damn. Dude. And then, yeah, it just kept going. I was like 14 <laughs> or 13 or 14. I, I was in this cover band. And back then in the day, you had to be 21 to be in a bar. And so I had to get a lawyer like a, a, that would <laughs> to have a lawyer to let me in past in the bar past nine o'clock. It was it was all fucked up. So like, a, the bar owner had to like sign these papers and shit to say it was okay for a minor to be in the bar. Cause we'd play from like nine to one in the morning, and and I was like thirteen or some shit. And these dudes in the band were like in their forties. So that was like my first like, oh wow, this is here's girls and here's whiskey, and here's marijuana, <laughs> and here's Molly Hatchet. Here we go. <laughs> it's go time. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so that's about it, man. I just kind of did that and then did some bands around here in Minnesota for a while and then got hooked up with the 60 Watt Dudes um, and then went out to Maryland for a while and did all that shit. And that was kind of like my break into the into the uh, major part of like tour. That was like my first tours and like major tours was back then with those. And I was just a pup too then, like 21 or some shit, 22. So that was it, and the rest is all fucking. Now here I am, all old and fucking broken down, and it's it's awesome. I wouldn't change it for the world. <laughs> <laughs> Having babies in your forties and shit, yeah, it's a great time. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. I hear you. Yeah, I, I'm 45, man. Yeah, and I I got I got a young one too, so I know I know exactly what you mean, man. Yeah, well, I'm 44. I'm, I, this is my, my daughter's with me this weekend, and. Man, she keeps me on my toes. She's four. So it's just like up and down, up and down. Here we go over here. Daddy, come here, Daddy. You're just run and run, run. It's so much fun. I'm like the king of fucking Paw Patrol right now. Like, it's all so awesome. <laughs> but it's just, but then like, you know, right now I'm just like ready to go to bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, but it's, I wouldn't change it, man. It's fucking great. She's the coolest thing in the world. Keeps you alive, man. Absolutely. It keeps everything. And she's a big rocker. I mean, she loves Kiss too. And she loves everything. Like, yeah, is this classic rock? And I'll say, yep, this is classic rock. And she'll turn it up. And she goes, what is this? I go, well, this is southern rock. She goes, I don't like southern rock. I was like, damn it. <laughs> and then, like, Skinner will come back on. And like, Dad, what is this? Is this southern rock? I'm like, nope, this is classic rock, just so we can keep it on. Or else she'll make me turn it if it's not classic rock or hard rock. She's got a mind on her. <laughs> Hell yeah, man! Yeah, my, my son, my my youngest, he's he's real big into Iron Maiden right now, and you, know, and it cracks me up because a lot of it definitely. I mean, he's into the songs, he likes the riffs and all the guitar stuff. And he tells me all about it too. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I know, but <laughs> right. it, it's the uh, you know he tells me like I like I'd never heard of it before. I'm like, yeah, right, right, right. Dad, check this out. <laughs> oh, what is this? You got to play surprise. Like, oh, what? This but, is cool. <laughs> you know, a big part of it is, is definitely the imagery and stuff that that makes a huge impact. And I remember, like you were saying about Kiss, you know, like being a kid back then in the uh, fucking early 80s, man. You know, like seeing cousins of mine that were older than me that had, like, posters of fucking D. Snyder and fucking... Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely, Sister. absolutely. That shit scared the fuck out of me, but I was like, what the fuck mm -hmm. is that? You know, like, they, it was... It pulled you to it, man. Like it didn't drive oh, you yeah. away. It was like, nope. I, I Absolutely, to... totally agree with you. I mean, I remember me and my brother, my my little, younger brother, and then my older brother, and this would have been what eighty three. Whenever Kiss did, took their makeup off, they had like the live fucking thing on MTV. We sat there, man, sat there watching the shit on TV. And then they finally showed the dudes without their makeup, and I cried. I was in fucking tears, <laughs> like literally fucking crying like a mother. I'm like, no, no. And then they played Lick It Up, the video for Lick It Up. I'm like, no, no. Like what? Oh, it devastated me because like my my heroes are dead. 
You know, and then like I just let them go, man. And then the older you get, the more those records are fucking better than the ones in makeup. I think. You know, yeah. musically, it's like, all right, this is cool. I can take some music Vinnie Vincent. That's all right. <laughs> it, it's crazy. It's crazy being a fan of of so many of these bands. Like like growing up with them too. Like like looking back, you know, like. You know, I remember uh, the same thing kind of happened sort of with Metallica. You know, the Black Album came out and everybody's, oh, no, you know, like, our fucking heroes are gone, man. But Yep, right. <laughs> you know, but I don't know. Looking back now, like, it's, I'm like, it's not that bad, man. It's actually pretty fucking cool. It's not that bad. And it's cool, you know, because like you said, you're a musician and you're old enough to know that, like, you have to progress. Yeah. I mean, you have to fucking progress. You know, you just, you can't stay the same thing. You ain't going to do a goddamn thing. You're just going to sit there, you know, so you got to move on. And, and everybody who moved on, Metallica included, became even more popular, which is great. It's great for everybody. It is. It you is. know, so it's like, good, good on you, son. Good on you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, for sure, man. You know, I, I remember, uh, you know, it was after that, that that all of a sudden we started finding out about bands like Overkill and Testament and. Stuff. Oh, for sure, yeah. Any that creator, all all, all that shit, man. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't for Metallica. We'd be like, who is this? You know, all that that Bay Area shit. It's like fucking right. Okay, this came from there, and then you then you can like take it to like the. Um, like the Florida thing, you know, like first Cannibal Corpse, you're like, this is awesome. But then you find Deicide and Obituary and all the other Morbid Angel, all the other bands up from down there. And it's like, wow, they got their own little scene and everybody rules. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, dude, I remember, I remember uh, watching fucking Dial MTV back in the 80s, you know, and everything on there was Dawkins and Bon Jovi and Warrants and all that crap. Which was cool at the time. It was definitely cool, like that we didn't know no better. But I remember when Metallica put the one video on there. Oh right, right. All, all of a sudden, it was like it was black and white. There's no makeup. There's no hairspray. They're just they they look pissed off. And, and <laughs> right. It was fucking depressing. It's dark, and it's like, what the fuck is this? It, it opened up a whole new fucking world, man. It was like ever since then, man. It's just been on a never ending. Uh, search for fucking heavy and just fucking yeah, just devastating. No, I I hear you. I hear you. It's good stuff, dude. It's it, it's progression. Everything's got to move forward, you know. And and it's just so cool the way it has. You know, there's so many new bands now that are, especially like the, the Pentagram stuff. It's like you you hear all this shit from these bands. They're like, man, if it wasn't for you guys, it wasn't for you guys. And we just go like, how? Like, why do you smoke us, man? Like, what are you talking about? You're like a ten times better band than we are, but, but it's cool to be like, you get, you know, you're, that band's help, or the reason why we're in this band. You're like, wow, that's, it's, it's, you know, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you, you did something. And, and I can't say we, because I mean, I, I'm, I'm not Bobby. I mean, he started the motherfucker, but I mean, I've been in the band for ten years, so it's, it's kind of like, it makes you feel good, you know? It just, it's kind of one of them deals where it goes, all right, this is all right. And, and there's a lot of cool bands out there, dude. Dude, Pentagram is one of those fucking bands that's like, it, it's, it's definitely like, I don't know, man. It's like finding a fucking diamond in the rough, man. I remember back when, uh, uh, around the time that I found out about Sixty Watt Shaman, actually, we were just searching over the internet looking for different bands that fit into the. Uh, that sort of genre of of doom and stuff, because back then that, that's that's what you did, you know. And and right. I remember uh, a friend of mine uh, who actually played drums in, in one of my bands that I was in at the time. He came over with the CD of Pentagram. Um, I can't remember which one. I think it was uh, Relentless. And he was mm. like, "Dude, you got to check this out, man." And I was listening to it, and we were just fucking blown away. And it was like, what the fuck? And then when I watched that documentary that Pellet made, I totally felt what he was talking about, like how he felt when he discovered it, because it was like that for a lot of us too, man. It was like, wow, how the how the fuck did this happen? And we didn't know about it, you know, like. 
Right, right. Yeah, that's a good thing. You know, I think it's a good thing. Um, you dig into it, and there's so much to be found, man. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and like I learned about Pentagram years, I mean, many, many years ago, by um, seeing it. What? What? There was something. And I saw that the logo I was like, oh, that's cool. It was on some video or some headbangers ball. I forgot who wore it. was wearing a T-shirt. And then when I joined 60 Wild, I mean, that's out of Maryland. So, like, obviously you get, you meet Wino and all those dudes right away. And then it's always, like, the obsessed pentagram. Like, well, who's this pentagram? And then finding out through all that shit and then finding out about, like, Trouble and, like, St. Vitus and Candle Mass and all these fucking old doom bands. Like, wow, this is, like, really fucking cool. Like, to me, it was better than Sabbath at the time, you know, it was like, this is rad. And then I remember seeing, um, uh, went to a Pantera concert and, and Phil had a shirt and on the back of a shirt, he had a pentagram patch. And I remember seeing it on top of the, on like the Tron or whatever in the fucking target center. It was like at the back of him, it said pentagram. It's like, Hey, there's that band again. It's like, fucking hey, they must be all right. It was cool. And then that last days here came out, or first days here, whatever that record fuck with, with all the seventies stuff. Yeah, dude. And people just yeah, they made shit on it, man. It was great. That's what so it's, it's all good. That's one of my favorites right there, man. Like those both volume one and two, man. I've got them both. Yeah, like two. Title. Yeah, two is rad. <laughs> yeah, fucking relapse did that cool fucking uh reissue of those both on vinyl, man, and fucking yeah, man. That's there's so many cool songs on there and it's just like Fuck, man! Like, like they were so ahead of their time, man. Or oh, absolutely, I believe so. I mean, I do. I think I really do. I think there was they they had their own thing like going on because there's a lot of bands, you know, obscure bands from the '70s from that era, but nothing really was as groovy and as like I don't even know the words. My brain's like a big old fucking it's bowl of mashed potatoes, man. <laughs> It's but it was just killer. Like, it was the American Sabbath. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was great. I remember my first show ever with those dudes um, was uh, before they had the Psycho Vegas thing. Uh, it used to be Psycho California is what it was called. And my first show ever we did um, last day's here. First day's here front to back. And it was, like, just mind-blowing to me. Like, I got to play this whole fucking record front wow. to back. It was killer, but it was like my first show. That was it. And then the next day we went to Europe. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, welcome to the big leagues, kid. You're like, God damn it. All right. <clears throat> but it was great. And we still play a lot of those tunes. Even to this day, we play a bunch of those. They're still in the set. Man. Well, you, I've never seen Pentagram live, dude. I've always wanted to, man. And uh, it's definitely that's definitely on my fucking uh, goals my, on my bucket list, man, is one of the things. That we'll make happen. it happen, Holmes. We'll make it happen, I promise you. We'll make it happen. We'll come see you. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> how, how, did you, how did you land the gig with Pentagram, man? Like, tell us the story about that. <clears throat> um, well, <clears throat> their guitar player at the time, Victor Griffin, uh, who was in the band since, like, you know, early 80s, he, he like, when they were death row, actually, and then they turn back in the pentagram. So like he's a guitar player on Relentless and uh, Beef, all that shit. Um, I've been playing with him in his other band, Place of Skulls, since like 2003 or some shit. Um, he he called me out of the blue. Um, they were looking for a drummer to go to Europe, and 60 Watt just broke up. And I guess someone said, "You got to call Pete, man. Like he doesn't have, a, he's not playing 60 Watt." So that's the first time I ever met him. Was when he called me. He says, "Hey, can you come to Knoxville? He lives in Knoxville. He's like, can play this, come to Europe with me." I'm like, cool. So I did that, and then I just kept being his drummer, his live drummer. And then me and him did a record together called Engraved. Uh, me and him wrote the whole thing together. Um, and then he went back to Pentagram, and then I kept telling him, man, I'm like, get me in there. He was looking there, looking for drummers. He's like, no, he's like, I'm not bringing you into this. I'm like, okay. I get the, you know, I was like, all right. He's like, you're not coming into this shit, man. You're no, you're not. And then one day uh, we we're just uh, we're sitting on top of the Civic Center here in town. They had like this uh, craft beer fucking thing. We just drunk her and fuck. Sit like we somehow we got to the roof of this civic center and my phone rang and it says it was Victor. And I said, All right, well, he wants something. Like he wants something. And then he that's what he said. He says, Man, can you come and uh save the day? 
again. I'm like, what do you mean? And I guess they were recording that Curious Volume record, and the drummer quit, like, halfway through the recording. Um, so I said, well, what do you want? He goes, well, you got to come down here and fucking play drums on this record. And I never heard any of them goddamn songs. I never heard shit. I'm like, okay. So I actually flew down there. We rehearsed for one day. Um, and I went in the studio and redid all the drums on that record. And, uh, it was really tough because usually you've recorded before. Like when you record, you do all the drums first and shit. And then everybody plays over you. I had to play to everything that was already recorded, all the guitars, all the everything, man. It was, it was like, okay. So I did that in like two days and then we listened back to it. And that's when Bobby's like, well, you might as well just join the band. <laughs> I, was like, I was like what and I looked around Greg uh, love Greg Turley he's like yeah he goes you want to join the band I'm like okay I go, can I call uh, can I call my wife he's like yeah call my wife and she says no and I said okay so I told him yeah I'll join <laughs> needless to say I'm on my second wife <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, you know, that's rock and roll is only here for a little bit. Chicks, they, they're, they're always there, man. You know what I'm saying? They make more. They don't make any more opportunities. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's how it all happened, man. So that's a, just like I came in to play drums. I was only going to do the record, and that was it. And then fucking I just ended up staying 10 years later. Fuck. That's badass, yep. dude. It was kind of cool. That is badass. And now you're doing this uh, this solo record, man. That you just you put out last year. Uh, yeah. Me, yeah. myself, and I. You just did it. Everything is is you, right? Yeah, play it everything. Like um, that. I did that during when everything started getting shut down, right in the beginning of like the pandemic shit, lockdown stuff. Um, Cause we had all these shows, all these tours, and everything, and everything got canceled. Everything's getting canceled, 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 canceled. Everybody was freaking the fuck out. So I was like, what do I do? So then I just like built a studio at my house and just like recorded all those songs. And that was it. But just like I'd get a little something in my brain and uh, just run downstairs and play drums and then go throw a guitar over it the next day and whatever and just fucking end up being a whole record. And I showed it to a buddy of mine uh, out in Germany who runs this record label called Cosmic Artifacts. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I want it. I was like, you can have it. <laughs> so that's just how it came. It was just supposed to be just for fun, but I mean, it's been doing really good. Like I'm, I, I feel so good in my heart that so many people are digging on it. It's, it's I'm fun. Well, I already got the second one already written. I just got to record it. But um, yeah, it's fun. It was just out of necessity, or else I was gonna fucking hang myself. It's either I record this record or I fucking go hang myself because I can't go play music because you couldn't. We couldn't go jam and you got all your friends. You know, you want to like go to your buddy's place. And like fucking have a beer and play some music. No one would let you in your house. You know what I mean? Because everyone had the fucking plague. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, well, fuck this. And my, I just had to stay busy. So I just that's what I did. That whole lockdown was just record that record. Well, fuck, man. There, there's some good fucking songs on that record. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I, I really, I really fucking dig it, man. I was been listening to it for the past. Uh, past while man and fucking just uh yeah man fucking uh right on you're my angel that's one of my favorites on there dude that's uh, there's which one you're my angel oh yeah 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 that one's uh, for my babe for my daughter yeah almost every song on there is about my daughter <laughs> i was i was kind of feeling that i was thinking that in, in my mind but then you know i didn't want to just assume but yeah 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 yep, yep. every song on there is, is basically about um my two kids i had uh we lost one uh we had a stillborn um so there's like songs like starlight and stuff like that are, are for her for layla and like lot swimming in layla's lair that's for her you know but then everything else like you're my angels for for uriah for my daughter everything's yeah I just like inspiration. You know what I mean? Like it was just like I'm gonna write these songs that just bam, like they wrote themselves. But that one man band shit, dude, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's fun, but then you're just like, ah, dude. Like, I wish I, there's more people. So I'm gonna try and like put a band. I've been getting so many offers to like put a band together and like go play some shows with it. So I'm gonna maybe do that. So I don't know what you're doing. You want to come up to Minnesota and fucking rock and roll, kid, or what? <laughs> you play some guitar, don't you? Hell yeah, man! Yeah, if I can play it, you can play it, right? 
Fucking A, man. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what? Yeah, I've been sitting there jamming by myself for fucking long enough, man. I'm I'm starting to get tired of it myself, dude. Like, I'm missing I'm missing playing with people. To be honest with you, I was just talking. Yeah, to it it does. It, it takes it away, man. Like it does. Like even renting town. Like when I'm at home and I'm not on the road or in D.C. with with those yahoos. Um, I start. We got this other band here called Rust Bucket, and it's just like bunch of us old fuckers like we're all dads and we all just get together and drink beer and write riffs and like it turned into like killer songs like it was supposed to be just for fun and now it's like turned it into a headache because it's like now we're booking shows and shit it wasn't supposed to be any shows it was supposed to be a bunch of old dudes drinking beer <laughs> but, but but it was just too good not to you know what i'm saying like the music is just so rad where it's it's uh we got to do it. So we're going to start recording that here, too, coming up a couple months. So that's going to be fun. You'll dig that. It's just like a fuzzy-ass fucking caveman rock and roll, Fu Manchu kind of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Groovy fuzz, fuzz rock. But it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. So I, I got to do that, too. That's like my out on Thursday nights. Like, I look forward to Thursday nights just to get the fuck out of the house and go play music. Well, speaking of drinking beers, man, what's your favorite beer to drink? You know... I used to be in that, like, all the dark shit and all that fancy fucking shit. But the older I get, <laughs> <laughs> the more I love myself a fucking ice cold Steve Miller Lite, baby. Just a Steve Miller Lite. I'll take a Miller Lite all day long because I can drink them all day long and not want to fight myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't, I'm not fighting myself in the corner. I'll drink a Miller Lite all day long. That'd be my beer choice. I feel you, man. Yeah, I, I like some of those dark ones too. Sometimes, man, like Lagunitas. But yeah, that's good stuff. Yep, yep. A lot of times, uh, like you said, man, the older I get, the more I find myself just buying the fucking the light shit, man. Like right now, I'm drinking Corona Premier, dude. Oh, that's great beer. It's fucking great, and, and like for for a six pack of fucking Steve Miller lights, you you can buy one of them dark ones at the bar. You know what I mean? For the price, so you can get six and stay at home and fucking jam records. Oh, yeah. or you can go to the bar and spend one and buy one, which you could have had six and had records. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> right. you go to the bar. You gotta get wise. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the bar, man. You're just fucked, man. It's good. It's, it's you're gonna fucked. Cost you. You're absolutely fucked. I mean, you're spending seven, eight bucks on a goddamn fucking chocolate stout or some bullshit <laughs> when you can just sit at home for seven eight bucks you're fucking you're good you got six here and, and your mountain records and you're ready to rock and roll hell yeah, hell yeah <laughs> man uh well looking back on your career man what, what can you tell us uh what are some fucked up moments what what's what's one of the I like to ask everybody, like, what's some of the highlights of your career? But, like, what's one of the most <laughs> fucked up things you've ever seen at a show, either your own or somebody else's, man? Something that sticks out in your memory. Oh, dude, I don't even know. There's been a lot of funny stuff. Um, One that I'll never forget is we played, uh, was it Hellfest? Hellfest or Bloodstock or some fucking... Some metal thing in Europe somewhere. Um, big festival, like three day fucking thing. And we played right before Gorgoroth. <laughs> <laughs> and they had fucking their spray, like there's blood everywhere and like pig's heads and shit, which is cool. It's metal as fuck and it's great. Uh, but, but they didn't clean it up. So when we rolled all our shit out there to start playing, I remember like, Greg and stuff like like two stepping and shit because he's like tripping on fucking blood like you know it's so slippery and like I, I turn around like behind my fucking drum riser and shit there's like this like a tote like a plastic fucking tote with these goddamn pigs heads in them like real fucking pigs heads that like some dude was like throwing in these totes I don't know if they're gonna use them for like the next night or something but it was just the fucking weirdest shit and then you look over and you see like the Gorgoroth guys just staring at you. Like, all bloody with their makeup, and they're like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is weird. But they ended up being, like, super cool, and they loved the band. Like, they're big Pentagram fans. But it was just like, how how and why are we playing here and after them? <laughs> like, this is fucking strange. This is very strange. But that, that always sticks out in my brain. That and um, 
it was a, I think this was Hellfest. It was like 2016 or 17 or something. And Blue Earth Cult, one of my favorite bands of all time. Like fucking, I love them motherfuckers. They played before us. And I never understood that. And I remember me and Victor were talking to Buck Dharma, the guitar player from BOC. And we said, dude, I, we don't get it. Like, you're Blue Oyster Cult. He goes, hey, man, times have changed. They were like, but still, you're fucking Blue Oyster Cult. Like, why, should, why are you, why are we not, like, in the afternoon and y'all at the fucking night? But that was just straight. But meeting him and, like, um, having a conversation with, with him and uh Scott Gorham from Thin Lizzy. It was just kinda like this thing, like these two dudes, these two legendary guitar players are sitting there shooting the shit about how bad the food was in catering. You know, or something like that. You're just like, this is so cool. You just want to sit there and like take a picture and go, Wow, man, these fucking guys. So that's just kinda cool shit, like meeting people and seeing stuff. But there really isn't much fucked up shit. I like I go to bed, man. I play the show, I take a shower and I'm out. You know, so I don't know what the fuck happens after after times. Oh, <laughs> that is cool, though. You know, like uh, you talking about the Gorgoroth guys, man. Like that is cool. How fucking so many different genres and subgenres and whatnot. And you, you would like, you know, a lot of people would think that some of these things don't like intermingle and they don't mix, but like they actually do, man. It it really really, really is like. It's all still part of the same fucking thing, you know, and we all, I don't know. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I, I hear you. I, I absolutely does. I mean, we we play some festivals where it's all, like, we just did this one in September. It was in Mexico, the Mexico Metal Fest. Um, it was killer, but it was all, like, you couldn't understand any, like, any of the band names. They're all, like, you threw sticks on the ground, you know, kind of thing, what their logos were. But it was just, like, us and Wasp were the only rock bands, but but it was so cool because it was it, it was like Us and Wasp. But then like Suffocation, we know all those dudes, Terrence and those motherfuckers. So they were there. Um, Cray La Filth was there. Um, Creator was there. So it was kind of cool. But then there was always all these death metal and black metal bands, and then Pentagram and Wasp were like the rock and roll. And it, but it was still pretty cool because I mean, you're in Mexico. Fuck it, who cares? No, oh, that sounds fucking badass, dude. <laughs> right, it was good. Like we spent, I spent more time in the fucking airport than I did it in the fucking Mexico. So it wasn't really that cool. <laughs> 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 but we had a good time, man. It was fun. But it's just that kind of thing is is pretty awesome. It's pretty cool to. I like to check out everybody, like uh, like walking around and watching festivals and shit. So that's the best part to me because I'm a fan before I'm an artist. You know what I'm saying? So I just I love to watch the bands. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Well, uh, let me ask you, like, what do you guys, uh, do you, do you have anything, is there anything you can announce that's coming up for, uh, for Pentagram? Uh, let me see. Well, we got some stuff in the works. Uh, I know there's, uh, some European dates in August, some Scandinavian stuff, and, uh, we're playing Wacken this year, too. Which I can't wait. Yeah, that's that's like on my rock and roll bucket list. It's the only festival I haven't played that I always wanted to. So that's going to be cool. So I uh, know that's in August as well. And I think that's all we have at the moment. But I'm always the last. I'll, I'll find out when I get a fucking email with a plane ticket. So that's all I know. <laughs> fucking Vakin's all you had to say, dude. Like, that's enough yeah. right there. Like, that's fucking, that's dope. Shit. I mean, that's the only one I've, I've, you know, played them all, all the other big ones, but that one I've always wanted to. Ever since I was a kid, you know, it was like, that was the biggest one. So we're, we're doing that one. With like, I think it's like Megadeth and, uh, fuck, who else? Someone else. I don't remember, but it, it's still going to be cool. But that's in August. Other than that, I know, I think we're going to try and record some new tunes as well. Try and get a new uh, new record out, hopefully this year. That'd be fucking great. Yeah, I don't know if it's true or not, but I, I remember reading like a few years ago that, that at Vakken that it got so fucking uh, big with the fucking beer and whatnot that they had to run a fucking pipeline into the fucking place of full of beer to fucking oh it could be man it could be <laughs> these fuckers get crazy dude it's a three day di- gig you know and then motherfuckers that yeah by the third day everyone's stinky and it's fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> that is so insane dude just thinking of it's just stink everywhere and it's like oh look at that big puddle of mud You're like oh that's not mud <laughs> 
it ain't mud, and that chick is rolling in it. Okay, then. That's like some, wood, <laughs> some Woodstock shit, man. Absolutely, yeah, but German. It, so it gets a little weird. <laughs> Hell yeah. Right on. Well, Pete, I guess I'm about out of questions for you, man. Is there anything else you want to let the, pe- let the people know? Oh, man, I just want to tell everybody, man, thank you for um, all the years of support, not just for me, but for Pentagram and for that kind of that heavy music. Like it's um, and, and, and Zach, you and your old lady and everybody here at, at Metal Devastation, y'all are, are like, it's so cool. I mean, what you guys do for like the scene and just for the music. I, I want to thank you for you know, even asking me to be on this motherfucker but for what you guys do it's you guys are the shit man like if it wasn't for shit like y'all the, w- no one would know about half the shit so i want to thank you personally for what y'all do thank you dude it's it's truly a fucking honor to us to even have you guys on here and, and to be able to bullshit with you man you know absolutely anytime brother anytime like you said, man, I'm I'm a fan first, man. That's what it's all about, dude. Yep, yep, me too. Same. At the end of the day, I'm still. I'm. What's fun is I'm still a fan of the band I play in. You know, and I think once that goes away, then you start getting ah, fuck this. But I'm still. I look forward to it. You know, just just look forward to playing those songs and and being and even being around the dudes. We don't even call it like a tour. We call it dudes vacation. Like we're going up on a dude's vacation for two weeks. All right, <laughs> sounds good. Where are we going? And then we always try to do like family fun days. We call them where we're like go stop somewhere. Like we always try to go. Like we hit the Grand Canyon or fucking Niagara Falls or wherever we're at. We'll like have a family fun day where we'll take the bus and make sure we get right to that one fucking thing. So it's cool. We're just a big family, bunch of idiots, old dudes in fucking in a bus. But it makes it fun. You know what I mean? It takes a monotony out of fucking. Rock and roll. So badass, dude. Right on. All right, man. Well, before I let you go, can I get you to make us a station tag real quick? Absolutely. All right. Whenever you're ready, say something like, This is Pete from Pentagram, and you're listening to Metal Devastation uh, Radio. All righty. Let me get this air out of my belly. Burp. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Hey, y'all, this is Minnesota Pete Campbell from Pentagram, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Fuck yeah, dude. That'll work? That works, man. Sweet deal. All right, man. Well, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us, brother. You got it, man. And we'll be in touch, man. We'll, we'll, We'll chill, and we'll talk, and we'll make magic. Fuck yeah, dude. I look forward to it, man. All right, Zach. Say hi to your old lady for me, and, and, and thank you guys for everything, man. Thank you, man. All right. Later. Bye bye. There you have it, folks. Pete from Pentagram on the fucking Zach Moonshine Show. Like I said earlier, put your speakers in your windows, put them in your front lawns, put them in your fucking driveways. Wherever the fuck you are, put your speakers in a place where it's going to fucking piss people off and crank this motherfucking shit up loud as a fucking fuck.